In the heart of the South Yorkshire countryside, just a few miles outside of Rotherham, sits one of the most magnificent Georgian houses ever built in Britain. It was home to the Earls of Strafford, the Marquesses of Rockingham, and then the Earls Fitzwilliam. For over 200 years, it was a political and economic powerhouse and home to one of the wealthiest families in the country. For some time, the house has been semi-derelict, but is now on a journey of major restoration. It's known more for the extraordinary length of the Palladian East facade than for the history of the great families who lived here, or indeed the impact they had on those who worked and lived on the vast estates surrounding the house. We talk of Wentworth Woodhouse being two grand houses joined together, but that's only partially true because there are traces of an earlier Jacobean house still in existence. The first Marquis of Rockingham built around and above the old house that his father had inherited from the second Earl of Strafford. The Baroque west front of the house was completed around 1734 and by this time work had already started on the enormous Palladian east front. This was finished by 1760, but the design was slightly different to the structure we see today. The fourth Earl Fitzwilliam commissioned the architect John Carr of York to build an additional floor of bedrooms onto the north and south wings of the house. And around 1801, the same architect created what we now know as the main staircase. Throughout this time, Wentworth Woodhouse stood at the centre of an estate of over 20,000 acres, which provided livelihoods to thousands of people in farms and businesses. The house alone employed about 70 staff, and 35 full-time gardeners in its heyday. During the 18th century, revenues from agriculture and forestry generated the family wealth. But it was coal, mined from the rich Barnsley seam, which secured the family fortunes throughout the Industrial Revolution and into the 20th century. The mid-20th century was a terrible time for country houses, and for the Fitzwilliam family in particular. Punitive taxes on inherited wealth and difficulties finding staff to work in such huge houses meant that places like Wentworth Woodhouse became increasingly difficult to maintain. After World War II, the coal mines were nationalised and then the gardens at the house were requisitioned by the government for open cast mining. At this time, owners of houses like Wentworth Woodhouse were free to destroy them at will. This place survived because a large part of it was turned into the Lady Mabel College of Physical Education and the first students arrived in 1950. I was a student at Lady Mabel College from 1966 to 1969. My first impression was that it was a huge place, but I was frightened and it was a real adventure for me to come to a place like this and be away from home for the first time. After about two weeks, I really started to feel as though I was meant to be here. Because all our rooms were shared, I had a roommate from Great Yarmouth, and she was from a totally different background from the one that I came from, but we got on like a house on fire. So we really both felt at home. At Lady Mabel College, we were encouraged to believe that everybody was an individual. They couldn't be put into boxes and we had to treat everybody as an individual. And that stood me in good stead throughout the whole of my working life. The college merged with Sheffield Polytechnic in 1979 and in 1986 they relinquished their lease of Wentworth Woodhouse. The 10th Earl Fitzwilliam had died a few years earlier and with him the title became extinct. The house and 83 acres of gardens was put on the open market for the very first time and sold to a private buyer in 1989. It was sold again in 1999 and the Wentworth Woodhouse Preservation Trust acquired the site in 2017 following the death of the last private owner, Mr Clifford Newbold. The whole project at Wentworth Woodhouse is about bringing something um, to the community and for the community with the community. That's what this entire project is about. From the restoration of the buildings to the development of the business that we've got here to the future use of the site. It's all about taking the communities of South Yorkshire and engaging with them and providing opportunities for them and involving them in the work that we're doing. 
Our work engaging young people in what we do has expanded significantly recently. In 2022, we're working with over 250 students aged 16 to 18 at Rotherham College, engaging them in projects relating to their studies in photography, graphics, media, art, construction and fashion. In preparation for Rotherham becoming the world's first children's capital of culture, we ran a digital skills training program during the first six months of 2022 for young people aged 17 to 24. They created a magnificent film shown on four large screens in the Whistle Jacket Room at the House of Future Creatives event, which they also designed and curated. The House of Future Creatives! I was really happy when I got the film producer role because it was the chance for me to take on the leadership role that I wanted, um, especially being one of the oldest in the group. Like I basically could go all right now and start freelancing. So physically, there's a big development, but also mentally there's a big development as well because five months ago, I didn't even think I was a good actor. And now I think I'm a decent actor and a good director. And in September, we ran our first internship program with students from the University of Oxford to digitise, transcribe and interpret some of the family papers which are held in the Sheffield City Archives. They worked with our largely voluntary research and archive team to help us discover more about this fascinating place. I think what really attracted me to the internship was the range of things, you have so many things that are available to you and you don't really get the opportunity to do those at other places. We were taking photos and scanning all of these documents so that we can transcribe them and have a nice resource of historical documents. So we're scanning them and then next week we will be transcribing them, uh, recording them in a database. Getting into the intimacy of these kind of historical figures and seeing them as humans was really interesting. A direct connection to the past and also shows a side of the aristocracy which we don't really get to see. It's just brilliant. It's, it's what everyone who's trying to break into the heritage kind of sector is looking for. All of this is in addition to the exciting programme of tours and events that we run each year. And the house has become a major location for film and TV companies. The work of the Trust is enabling the house to become a catalyst for positive change in the region. We've attracted significant levels of inward investment and created over a hundred jobs within the Trust and surrounding businesses as we raise our profile and the range of activities that we undertake. And we've done this despite the need to close the house and gardens for long periods during the COVID pandemic. Wentworth Wood House is starting to reassert its position at the heart of the communities that surround it. And it's making an increasingly positive contribution to the lives and well-being of many thousands of local people.